Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to make a linked list two separate ways using Python and object-oriented programming. Now if you don't know too much about object-oriented programming, no worries, we won't go too in-depth about it, just enough so we can get the point across and actually understand what we're trying to do. Now if you remember from our last video, a linked list is pretty much just comprised of a bunch of data structures called nodes. Now each node has two different attributes. The first attribute is the value of the node, which can be anything from strings to integers to characters to objects and so on. Now the second attribute of a node is the next, and what that means is it's a pointer to the next node in the sequence. So not only does every node have a value, but it also has a pointer that points to the next node, and that's how a linked list works. If you're still a bit shady on that, feel free to check out our last video, which I'll link down in the description below. Now, as you can see here, I've simply created a class called linked list node, and I've set up a constructor that takes in a value and automatically assigns the next to none. So all we have to do here is set self.value equal to the value we're getting in our parameter. So if you're familiar with Python, this is pretty much just setting up our instance variables. And self.next, let's rename this to next node so we don't go over a keyword in Python. Next node equals to the next node that we're setting to none in our parameters. So this is pretty much it. Now what we can do is let's say we want to make a linked list that looks something like this. We have our first value, so we have a linked list and the first value is a 3 that points to the second value which is a 7, which then points to the third value which is a 10. Well we can create the first node and say node 1 is equal to linked list node and then provide the first value which is 3. So it's also good to note that we only have to provide one parameter, which is the value, because for the next node, we're setting it to none for now, and we will manually set it later. So our first node is the 3. So we just say node 1 equals linked list node 3. The second node is the 7. So we just do the same thing, and the value becomes a 7. And now for the third node, all we have to do is edit this a bit and say it's equal to 10. So right now what we've done is we've created the nodes, the isolated nodes by themselves. Right now we just have three different nodes that aren't connected that contain the values 3, 7, and 10. The next thing to do is simply connect them together. So we can say node1.nextNode is equal to node2. And this creates the relationship of simply node1 points to node2. which as we can see, if we look at it strictly from a value perspective, 3 points to the 7. Now we can do node2.nextNode is equal to node3, and what we're doing here is connecting the 7 and the 10. So what we just did was node2 points to node3, which value-wise just looks like this, 7 points to the 10. What we have here is essentially node1 points to node2, which points to node3. And there you have, we, ha we have our linked list, so we can write some very basic code just to test it out and see how it works. So we can create a while loop uh, that's true, and we can set our current node to node 1. So current node can equal to node 1, which means node 1 is our head, which in this case it is. So while true, we can just print current node.value. Just for formatting sake, we can add a little arrow here just to make it a bit easier to see. And then we can check if current node.next is none. So what we're doing is we're making sure that our current node isn't the tail node. So if current node.next node is none, what we want to do is maybe print out, print out none and then break. But if it's not, all we want to do is simply set the current node equals to our current node dot next. So the first time it runs, it's going to look at 3 and it's going to print the value 3. Then it's going to say, OK, is the next node none? And as we can see, the next node is actually 7, so it's not none. So what we're just going to do is we're going to say, OK, the current node is now equal to the next node in the sequence, which is 7. And we can see here, if we were to run this code, what we get here is simply our linked list, 3 points to 7, which points to 10. And since 10 is the last node in the sequence, it points to none. 
So just to sort of get the point across, we can also add a fourth node and let's say make that fourth node 77. And all we would have to do to add that into our linked list is simply point to the last node, which is node three, towards node four, which is the new node we just created. So now if we were run this, we can see that 10, which used to be our tail node, actually points to 77 and now none. So this is one way to do it, and it's a very simplified way to do it because all we're doing is creating our node class and simply pointing each node to the next one. It's very manual and it's very minimalistic. Now let's move on to the second example of how we can code this, which is a lot more hands-on. As you can see, we still have the linked list node class here, and we're gonna make a new class called linked list. And the reason we're keeping this class here is because we're actually gonna be using it within this linked list. Now, as you can see here, I'm going to make a pretty simple implementation of this linked list, one that only takes in the head as its constructor and pretty much only keeps track of the head because in interview questions, all you're really going to get is the head of the linked list when they ask you to do a linked list question. However, what you're going to see here is I'm simply going to start making the insert function and the insert function is going to take in the value. You can do a lot of different methods. You have a lot of different options when it comes to making this linked list. You could keep track of maybe the tail node. You could keep track of the, the account of the amount of nodes. You could really turn this into a whole suite of functionalities for your linked list, but I'm going to stick to the bare minimum. I'm just going to show you how to do the insert function of a linked list and take it from there. So the first thing we'll want to do is we're going to actually want to create a node out of the value that's passed in. When someone creates this linked list, they're not actually going to create a node automatically with it. When they first create it, the linked list is going to be empty. When they try to insert an element, we quickly make a node with the value that they want to insert in. Now, we have to do our due diligences and make sure we check to see whether or not we have any nodes currently in the linked list. If we don't currently have any nodes in the linked list, which is satisfied by if our head is none, then what we simply do is is we say our head is now equal to the new node we've created and we return. We pretty much don't have to do anything from there because there's no nodes to append our new node to. So when we're inserting and there's nothing in our linked list, we're pretty much just inserting one element and it becomes our head. It doesn't point to anything. Now, that's not always going to be the case. In fact, only for the first element will it ever be the case. The next thing we have to do is if it is not the head node, what we're going to do is look at where the head node is and try to find the tail by traversing through the linked list using the head node. So the first thing we do is we get our current node, which is at first our head node, and we make a little while loop that simply traverses the entire linked list. So as we can see here, if the current node dot next node is none, which means if there is no node after the current node we are at, then what we want to do is we are going to make that next node our node. The only way this if statement will be satisfied is if the node we are at is the tail. And when we're inserting into a linked list, we want to insert the node at the tail element. And we can just break out this while loop and we will be done. Now if it's not, what we have to do is simply set our current node to the next node so that we can keep on traversing through the linked list to find the tail node. And that is pretty much it. Now, as you can see down here, let me bring this up a bit. I've simply made a little function and all it does is it prints out the linked list for testing purposes. So using this, we can actually see how well our insert code works. As you can see here, all it's doing is it's getting the head and it's simply traversing through the linked list and printing out the elements and then printing none when it gets to the end. So let's say we run this right now. So we can see here, before we look at these results, we can see here the first thing we do is we create a linked list. Now after we create that linked list, we print the elements in the linked list, and obviously we haven't added a node in the linked list, therefore it's simply going to print done. Now the second thing we want to do is insert 3. Insert a new element called 3 into the linked list, and when we print it, we see we have 3 that links to none, because there's no other elements. There's no other nodes in the linked list at this point. Now we keep on doing this, we add 44, we print the list, we get 3 to 44 to none, we add 55, as you can see 55 is appended to the end of the linked list, and so on and so forth.
Now, that's a basic idea of how to make a linked list class that you can actually build off of and use the linked list node class to create. Now, there are tons of different things you could do with this. You could create a deleted class. Like I said, you could keep track of all the nodes. You can keep track of your tail node, etc., etc., etc. But just for these interview purposes, I just wanted to show you the basics of how you could start one of these classes. So there you have it guys, and that is how you build a linked list in Python, whether you just want to do it the fast way with nodes, or whether you want to do it the sort of more complicated but more comprehensive way with a complete class. Now in the next video, we are going to be going over some linked list interview questions, and that is sort of what these entire uh, this little video series is dedicated to, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Once again, give us a thumbs up if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel for future videos, and if you you want to see the code link as always is in the github below thanks so much for watching and i'll see you guys later